Hello everybody and welcome to the Filipino Free Thinkers podcast. It's also a video. I'm Red. I'm Fisher. I'm King. And this month, the month of March, we are celebrating Women's Month, which is why we're talking about the flesh-eating disease <laughs> in Pangasinan. Okay, that's somewhat unrelated, but we'll, we'll find a way to relate it somehow. But uh, seriously, it's Women's Month and something is important. Something important is happening. Uh, the RH bill is being deliberated on by the justices. RH law. And its constitutionality or unconstitutionality mm-hmm. will be decided very soon. So uh, keep aware and be aware of what's happening there. And RH advocates keep talking about it. But for this podcast, we are talking about the flesh eating disease in Pangasinan. So for those of you who haven't heard about it or haven't experienced the flesh eating disease, like here's a link to the, the controversy. But if you don't want to check the link, uh, we have our resident science advocacy director, Pisher, to tell us all about it. Well, not really all about the flesh-eating disease, but more of the controversy. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, maybe a little bit more than a couple of weeks ago, Bandila, it's a late-night TV show in ABS-CBN, uh, aired this news that there's a supposed flesh-eating disease spreading in Pangasinan. They reported two cases, and if I remember it right, in the report, the reporter was even in a hazard suit. Has like, that? Has okay, not? Okay. Yeah, complete, really? Like, yeah, like it was really, I don't know if that was the intention, but if you saw the news, it would really Maybe strike scared. fear to your heart. Even if you try to rationalize it like that can't be true, it would really plant that seed of Fear and panic. So, so okay, there's this disease. We have hazmat mm. suits. Mm-hmm. But what made it so controversial? Well, there are two things that made it controversial. First of all, it was found out that it's not true. There is no flesh-eating disease here in the Philippines. So just to be clear, no flesh-eating disease. So what we're talking about doesn't actually exist. We're talking about a controversy. If you don't believe us, the DOH themselves yes. call this a hoax. So yes, and also um, lots of scientists and doctors also confirmed that there is really no flesh-eating disease here in the Philippines, especially those two cases in Pangasinan. One is a case of psoriasis and the other is a case of leprosy, although other doctors are saying it's not leprosy, it's some other thing, but to be sure it's not flesh-eating bacteria, not a flesh-eating disease, so that we're sure of. So that's the first aspect that's controversial, the fact that it wasn't true. And the second was that they were trying to link it to a prophecy. So um, two Indian prophets. Deepak Chopra. (laughs) I forgot their name, though. Might as well be Deepak Chopra because when it comes to these people, like they're equally as authoritative on scientific matters. But please continue. So and matters about the future. So these Two prophets came here to the Philippines a couple of years ago or last year, and some people claim, their believers claim, that they were able to predict Typhoon Yolanda, and it was supposedly shown that they said that a great storm would hit the central Philippines. Of course, they stated it in very in a very vague manner, but they said a great wind and lots of water would sweep the middle of the Philippines, and they also predicted that. A flesh-eating bacteria, they were very specific on this, would start in the Philippines. And they said in the northernmost part of the Philippines, it would, it would spread throughout the Did entire world. Did they specifically say that it was going to start in Pangasinan? They supposedly said that it was going to start in Pangasinan, mm. so, which was apparently Pangasinan is in the northernmost part of the country <laughs> because they repeatedly okay. said it. It's in the northernmost part of the Philippines. So Pangasinan. Is the... Pangasinan, yes. Okay. And it will spread throughout. Update your maps. The, yes, your geography. So this will spread throughout the entire world. Entire and, world. Yes, and it will start from the Philippines. I, I read somewhere that the prophecy included like it would spread first to Cebu, something like that. Yes, yes there was a prophecy. And then to the entire world. <laughs> and then to the entire world. Yes. So Cebu in fact, they were, in know, fact but... they were quite specific. It's the hub. Yeah. <laughs> like, um, I, I admire these kinds of prophets because they're actually falsifiable. Yeah. They're, yeah. They make. Um, falsifiable claims about mm. the world mm. in which you can show that it's wrong. Yeah. So I, I admire them for that because the other prophets, 
are not even wrong. Well, these yeah. guys, they're just wrong. And yeah. in this case, they were proven wrong. Yeah, but even if like they were proven wrong, mm. still many people believed it. And why do you think that is? And I, this is one of the things that we are going to talk about. It's about the media's responsibility mm. on this issue. Like someone could have blogged about it, could have tweeted about it, but it wouldn't have gotten as much reach if it hadn't been published by ABS-CBN. Mm -hmm. people, any, yeah. people wouldn't have been as scared yeah. if yes. there wasn't a hazmat suit, if it mm -hmm. didn't go on a national television. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it wasn't published by a tabloid mm -hmm. or some other like blogger. Of course, I'm not saying that bloggers are not reliable. In fact, in this case, many bloggers are more reliable than ABS-CBN when it came to reporting the news. But uh, that being said, when ABS-CBN does publish news like this, that's, that's the operative word here. It's news. Mm -hmm. And people assume that it's going to be trustworthy. Yes, because it's, of course, reported by journalists. And journalists um, are, of course, um, have the profession of really reporting the news as, as it is, reporting things that happen as they know it to be true. And it's part of their responsibility, their professional responsibility, to make sure that what they're reporting is really accurate. So who's at fault here? Who do you think is at fault here? Of, of course, there's the news. Mm -hmm. There's the, the news outlet. There's the people who believe this and mm -hmm. help spread it. I mean, when the links came out on Facebook, mm -hmm. many people shared, shared it. Oh, yeah, uh, that is a very good question, Red. Because, of course, we know that the news outlet is at fault here for reporting something that is not true or not making, sh um, not making it clear that what they're reporting is just an allegation and not a confirmed, uh, not confirmed incident. Mm. Even though they use the words alleged, we know that sometimes when you report something or when you try to say that something is, when you're trying to to debunk something, people will even believe it more. Mm. Like people who already yeah, believe is... on something when you try to debunk it, their belief on on that falsehood is strengthened. Mm. So there's that. So there is the lack of fact checking. Um, fact checking, the lack of care as well mm. in the part of the news outlet. And I guess there's also an aspect in which there's a problem here in the Philippines, and I guess it's not just a local problem, in which people are quite gullible. Yeah, so, yeah. In fact, we're some the most gullible country in the world. Wow, here's a really? <laughs> here's a link to an article, mm -hmm. factual, non-satirical <laughs> article that says we are the most gullible country in the world. And you know, one of the one of our public officials actually had to respond to that, saying that you know we're not the most gullible country in the world so yeah you're right like a lot of people are mm. gullible speaking of other news that is not satire there's this other news article that you should read it's about this gullibility disease that's spreading throughout the philippines and uh, again cebu is going to be the port <laughs> from which it will spread all over the world but anyway all sarcasm aside what does the the media have as a responsibility? Like, should they only report on news that they have fact-checked, that they have verified and investigated to the utmost of their resources? Because I think, uh, personally, that even if they use the hedge words, allegedly, and all of those, all of that, even if, like, the fact that they reported on it gives it some credence. Mm -hmm. Like, they won't suddenly just report that someone, like, let's say, Pinoy, is allegedly a zombie, mm -hmm. you know, like because why? Why would you? Why would you lend credence to it? But if somebody, some prophet, maybe an Indian prophet, mm -hmm. reports that Pinoy is allegedly a zombie, then then I bet some news station, news outlet, is going to report on it because as the one of the best shows on TV, Newsroom, um, asked, like, do you want to get it first or do you want to get it right? Because um, this brought a lot of traffic to ABS-CBN. It even brought a lot of traffic to our page when we reported yeah. on it being a hoax. I don't know why. Like So many people just uh, went to the page and read the articles and they were discussing on there. And so anyway, my question, what is the responsibility of the media when it comes to 
reporting these things. Is, is there no board of journalists where like they have rules? Like an ethical board. Yeah, yeah, an ethical board. I don't I don't think so. Maybe there's a satirical article that says that there is a a board of ethics for dr- no, I'm I'm kidding. Of course journalists mm. Of course, journalists. Yeah, ng mga broadcast. Yeah, there yeah, you go. There you Filipinas. go. And what do they say about reporting things like this? Things Actually, like many other news outlets criticized um, ABS-CBN for reporting. And rightly news, so, right? And rightly so. Like we have inquired GMA. Of course, they took the opportunity to criticize ABS-CBN, and they especially reported the people from Pangasinan complaining yeah. about the reporting. The Governor, for example, of Pangasinan told ABS-CBN that apology is not enough. Because mm. the effect yeah. of this was really great, yeah. especially on the tourism of Pangasinan. There you go. Yeah. The, the governor of Pangasinan said that a lot of people who initially, um, what do you call this? They reserved Plan- uh, yeah. Plan- slots, vacation yeah, planned and- a vacation there and reserved ugh, slots in the hotels, reserved rooms. Yeah. They didn't go. After they heard the news. Yeah, yeah. Like, just to be sure. They weren't sure if it was true, even if it was alleged. You know there, there's, yeah, there's a risk, right? Because there, there are so many other places that you could go to. Why yeah. take the risk? Yes. Like, you're going to pay risk. money mm-hmm. to, to expose yourself mm-hmm. to a potential flesh-eating disease. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so why would, yeah. Yeah, so I, I think that the, the media does have a really, really strong responsibility. It's like the responsibility of scientists, the responsibility of doctors, it's the responsibility of all professionals. Like we, who have other professions, are not experts on these things. Of course, there are times when we can complain about how wrong they are in reporting this and that, in the same way that we could complain to our doctors that they are not competent enough. But when we go to a professional, we always start by assuming that they respect the standards of their profession in that they should do everything in their best to, to, to show that they deserve to be called a doctor, to be called a scientist, to be called a journalist. Mm-hmm. And part of being called a journalist is having that responsibility of reporting the truth. Speaking of professionals, did they get second opinions before reporting this or as they were reporting this? Because usually like, people on the other side mm-hmm. are consulted. Mm-hmm. Like you would have Someone, like some wacko, <laughs> like using the technical term, you know, wacko, uh, on the other side, you know, reporting that there was a prophecy and it did come true. And on the other side, you would have someone from the DOH. So did, it, did, did they report it initially in this format or they, was it just... They, in a way, what? they did. They interviewed yeah, yeah. people from Pangasinan, doctors in the hospitals. Yeah. But... I guess the questions were, in a way, leading, and mm. it was really the way it was presented. Yeah. And in fact, the people who were interviewed later apologized, and they wanted to clarify that when they were being interviewed, they didn't know that it the was, news would yeah. be presented in this way. So if, if they knew, they would have clarified that. We know that this is not the flesh eating back. Edit- I mean, we all know this. Editing does a lot of difference. Yes, yeah. yes, it does. Yeah. Yeah. So, in other words, it was sensationalized. Mm, yes. Because if, if it, it was. was dismissed, like, right, right off the bat, mm. but, you know, it was dismissed that this is just a hoax, mm. then it wouldn't have gotten so much viewership. But because they, were, they presented it in that way, they got all of the, this traffic, and they can present that to the advertisers mm-hmm. who pay for the jobs of the reporters and everyone else who's working for them. So that's just you know the the, the sad state of things. Yeah. In fact, it was a, it was art. Well, the the way they wanted to sensationalize it was in fact quite clever because they wanted they, they were originally planning to show it as a two part news. Wow. Yeah. Two Deserving two two yeah, parts. Two parts. Yeah. In the first part, they only hinted to the prophecy. To yeah. The pro- yeah. So okay. they reported about the possible alleged flesh-eating bacteria. And they hinted a bit on the prophecy. And they said, more on this prophecy thingy on the second mm. part. Uh, wow. I guess that would have been a couple of days after the initial report. Yeah, so they would have milked it for all it was worth. Yes. But because, of course, the vigilant people of the internet were able to call out 
uh, call them out on this, they did not report the second part. So they decided mm -hmm. against it. Also, something that I'd like to bring up is that false equivalence that they have, you know, they, there's on one side people saying that the prophecy is true. On the other side, you have these doctors who are saying that it is a hoax. Mm -hmm. So because he presented it in like on two two sides, you think that hmm, one could be one opinion is as good as the other, and mm -hmm. it's not the case. Like uh, in terms of airtime, like the people who were saying that this is a prophecy actually deserved none, mm -hmm. and it was just the, the the experts in this context. You know, like people could report on it being a hoax somewhere else, but as you said, like the way they sensationalized it. And again, it's this false sense of uh, giving, yeah, symmetry. giving false symmetry. both sides, mm -hmm. you know, but both sides are often not equal. And, but the, again, there's the, there's the issue. Does the media have a responsibility of giving more airtime to the more credible people like, on any given issue? Mm -hmm. like, do they have a responsibility to be fair and give like equal time to the to the crackpots and the scientists mm -hmm. what what do you think of course i think that they shouldn't definitely not and in fact they shouldn't give airtime to crackpots at all but that is one thing i find really disheartening when it comes to the media here in the philippines is that the people working in the media a lot of them don't even know how to distinguish genuine crackpots, uh, genuine experts yeah. from crackpots, from yeah. genuine crackpots. That's yeah. another issue though, That's because issue. on this issue, it appears to me that it was clear to them from the beginning that it was not a prophecy, that it was not science that they were reporting. Mm. I mean, I, I think the, the fact that they went to Pangasinan and reported on this, they were they already believed in the prophecy. Oh, they were so, already yeah. reporting on that prophecy. I see. Yeah. So, so they were already biased. But so they believed it. it. I, I think so. I mean, oh. yeah. Also, I, I point at least to it. one it person seems, yes. in that team mm -hmm. believed it mm -hmm. enough to to go to the yeah, to enough to, to 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 pitch but, it. But to then again, boss. if they actually believed it, why would they go all the way there to expose themselves? Because it, it's another thing if they themselves, like the reporters, were wearing hazmat suits, <laughs> right? But for them to go there and expose themselves, okay, uh, that's another issue. Whether they were actually sincere. In believing it, you th I, I don't think they, I, I, I don't think they thought they would get found out, mm. right? I mean, as you said, they already had a second episode yes, planned. Yes. Oh, so they, yeah. so they, they thought they, would, right. they yeah. would be free. I guess they were thinking that they would be able to get away with it because yeah. yeah. they were using the usual hedge words. Mm. So they were hoping that they could hide behind these hedge words and hide behind the controversy and say that, hey, we were just reporting a controversy. We, won't, we weren't reporting it as fact. So the next time that you hear about a prophecy, about a Resident Evil-like disease that's going to spread through Cebu, <laughs> check your facts. Actually, check the satirical, art, satirical websites. There's more truth there. There's more truth in the gullibility spreading in the Philippines than in that flesh-eating disease spreading throughout the world through the port of Cebu. So happy Women's Month, and we promise to talk about more women-related issues on the next podcast. And see you next time.